term abuse of rights refers to the unjustified exercise of rights, jurisdiction, and freedom's interference with the exercise of rights by another state and abuse of powers by one state that harms another. Islam recognizes rights in a manner that is consistent with our understanding of rights generally. Human rights have never been ignored by Islam, especially when it comes to non-believers. Rather, Islam ensures the safety of every single creature created by Allah in this universe, which can be observed through the Maqas Sharia, where the primary goal is to achieve public good and avoid harm. Thus, this video will be further discussed based on five questions. The first question is, what causes misuse or abuse of rights and global economic crisis? Second, what are the effects of the tremendous global economic crisis? Third, why is it important to protect human rights in a global economic crisis? Fourth, what does an economist say about human equal rights from an Islamic perspective? And fifth, what actions should address the global recession and human rights abuses? And now we will look first to the first question which is, what causes misuse or abuse of rights and global economic crisis? In order to determine who is at fault for a crime, in this case, it is necessary to investigate the factors that led to a state's failure to uphold its international obligations. Human rights language has adopted the concept of root causes as a means of discussing ways to prevent disputes from erupting. Firstly, failure to guarantee good governance, the impartial rule of law and comprehensive social justice and expansion can trigger disputes as well as commercial, political and social turmoil. Second, fear of losing power, where the leaders' fear of losing power may sway them to engage in self-serving behaviour. Third, some people's sense of pride leads them to be excessively greedy. Those in positions of authority have a pathological fear of having low self-respect and are therefore preoccupied with maintaining a high level of regard for themselves. Next, people who lack self-respect let others define who they are. They tend to be self-destructive, harmful to themselves and others, and prone to acting on impulse. Second question to go through, what are the effects of the tremendous global economic crisis? The global economic crisis is destroying people's lives and ways of making a living all around the world as a result of the banking crisis, fuel crisis and food crisis. As we shall see, the poorest people in the poorest countries, especially women and children, migrants and minorities, have been hit hardest by the financial crisis spillover into the real economy and have had to make terrible sacrifices as a result. Tragic human lives lost during the crisis are seen as the inevitable result of uncontrollable market processes from an economic standpoint. Next, all the affected have been hit hardest by the financial crisis spillover into the real economy and have had to make terrible sacrifices as a result. All human rights are in jeopardy due to the current financial crisis. It endangers not just civil and political rights, but also social and cultural ones such as the right to a decent quality of living, medical treatment, a clean and safe environment, adequate food and nourishment, and an education. Not to mention, the global economic crisis affects on unemployment and social unrest can exacerbate violence against women, which in turn impacts their rights. The global economic crisis has been especially hard on women in export industries like manufacturing, textiles, electronics and services where they are more prone to work in the informal economy and they receive lower income and have fewer legal rights if laid off. The economic downturn also makes it harder for more and more people to pay for the private health care. Even though it would be best to fix the real problem with the economy, it is best to leave this to the government. Even though unemployment rates went up a lot in Malaysia, Sweden and Finland, suicide rates went down. Research in the former USSR showed that people's mental health problems went down a lot when they joined trade unions or sport clubs in large numbers. That question is, why is it important to protect human rights in a global economic crisis? Firstly, the importance of protecting rights during economic crisis is to promote equality, better racism and discrimination. It is important to retain complete fair and equitable treatment laws that aim to prohibit and penalize unfair discrimination based on factors including gender or sex, racial or ethnic origin. In the second place, it is crucial to conduct thorough impact analysis of human rights and equality. Governments are required to show how their laws, policies and programs support and do not compromise the protection of human rights. Third, ensuring the right to respectable employment. 
it is important to uphold rights such as those to safe and healthy working conditions, freedom from child labor and forced labor, the removal of employment discrimination, direct access to unemployment compensation, and allowances for injuries sustained on the job. First question we are going to go through is, what does an economist say about human equal rights from an Islamic perspective? Firstly, security of life and property is perhaps the most important and fundamental basic right. Concerning property rights, Islam teaches each person to be able to support his or her household and meet their own requirements based on the successes of their life experiences. The right to the safety of life is the second significant element in the Charter of Human Rights that Islam has granted. By not taking into account a person's race, gender, nation or religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted everyone in his mercy the right to live. As narrated by Imam Bukhari and attributed to Am bin Arsh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "A person who kills a person under agreement, which is a non-Muslim citizen in an Islamic state, would not kiss heaven even if he just smelled the fragrance." Along with that, respect for the human right to freedom of thought. Throughout Prophet Muhammad's lifetime, the Messenger of Allah encouraged his friends to voice their thoughts even if they went against his own. The followers' attitudes were shaped by the Prophet in such a way that they were free to disagree without fear. Last but not least is respect for religious freedom. Muslims believe that Al-Baqarah chapter 2 ayat 256 of the Quran is what inspired Islam's foundation for religious freedom, which made it absolutely clear that religion is not something that must be forced. Every man has some essential human rights that should be acknowledged by every Muslim, regardless of his affiliation with a particular nation, his religious beliefs, or whether he lives anywhere. In drawing things to a close, we will take a look to what steps should be taken to address the global recession and human rights abuses. The first step in achieving this should be for governments to acknowledge the obligatory commitments regarding human rights inherent in the International Covenant on Economy, Social and Cultural Rights, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and other key international human rights laws. Government's first priority in the immediate term should be to stop and lessen the crisis' terrible effects on people's lives. Governments must avoid infringing on people's civil and political rights such as the freedoms of expression, association and knowledge. To alleviate hunger, homelessness and poverty, social safety initiatives must be implemented right away. Additionally, it entails ring-fencing government funds to guarantee that the distribution of necessities such as those required to prevent maternal or infant mortality and to guarantee the completion of primary school education does not slide. Since the financial and economic crisis is a global concern, global solutions are needed. The decision-making on global policy responses and new regulatory requirements should take place in multilateral organizations like the United Nations, where 192 countries are present, rather than in dominant, self-selected decision-making organizations like the G8 or the G20. The non-discrimination, participation, openness and accountability norms of human rights should also be adhered to while making decisions about economic policies and remedies to the recession on a global scale. In conclusion, abuse and misuse of rights and global economic crisis issues have long been a discussion among people. On the other hand, worldwide crises that have occurred throughout time must be treated seriously. Although necessary activities must be performed, improvements cannot be made if society does not initiate the desired change. We must comprehend the notion of justice, which is to put things in their place. As a result, we shall not violate the rights of others. Sustainable development goals, which have been used as benchmarks, have made significant contributions, particularly in assisting people in dealing with the issue of rights, abuse and misuse, as well as global economic crisis. SDG 16 fosters peaceful and inclusive societies for long-term development. It will also ensure equal access to justice and the development of effective and inclusive institutions at all levels. When everyone works together to make their nation a better place with fewer to no significant economic crises, people will have to worry about how they will survive in the future. Sustainable development goals will be met effectively and society will live in justice and peace.